Wisdom, honey. When you enjoy becoming wise, there is hope for you. A bright future lies ahead. Your focus, our this focus. This is the Stevenson's definition of focus. Okay, here it is. It is the pursuit of and the protection of wisdom. Hello and welcome to Lady Wisdom Speaks Academy. My name is Dr. Catherine Constant and I am the author of the book Lady Wisdom Speaks and also Lady Wisdom Gives a Party. Well, I've been listening to Dr. Matthew Stevenson the third of All Nations Worship Assembly of Chicago and his topic this month is on focus. exclude anyone and um, we're taking the month of November to study the subject of focus and um, we are studying it in, in several rounds focus and this month happens to be my birthday month yes the month of November focus in any area of life is the passionate pursuit of and the protection of wisdom if it is a focus on a family issue, you are pursuing what? Wisdom for that and protecting that wisdom. If it is a body issue, it is the pursuit of wisdom on that issue and the protection of that wisdom. In other words, the depth of the book of Job is wisdom. And I find that November is a very wonderful month to start anew, to really think about what you want for the next year and i don't want to get into this yet but one of the things the lord is saying concerning 2019 and i know i'm going to get bashed because all the other prophets are prophesying otherwise but here is what i'm saying like micaiah unto you for some of you it is not your expansion time it is your downsizing time now that's very and interesting the, the idea of the downsizing the time all of the opposite better hear what I'm telling you it is time to downsize for very many of you right now we're in 2018 and we're looking forward to 2019 to do things better to increase and to improve and um, so I really am appreciating this this particular series with uh, Apostle Stevenson when he's talking about focus because Focus is so important. If you're not focused, then it's hard for you to really move forward into what God has for you. Ownership is important, but who said you got to go to a house now? Uh, some of you need to buy a condo. You need to be able. You know, to I was thinking about that, and if you to your life. that's free, the rest is co uh, coming later. If, um, but these are full. If you really think about it, downsizing, downsizing one's life means to clean out the clutter and to remove those things you know that are hindering so why do I do the things that I do and how do I remove them how do I clean out the closet and I, I kind of wrote that down here the closet space in my life in my memory how do I go about cleaning out that space and making it clear and clean and getting ready for this particular year coming up 2019 so right now um, I'm focusing on my house and I'm thinking about my physical house my emotional house my uh, intellectual house my physical body the house, the temple of, he says your body is the temple of the living God. Yes, my physical body as well. And how am I going to improve it? What am I going to do to move forward into this new year that's coming up, 2019? And now is the best time to think about it because I have the rest of this month and also the month of December to start to make changes and to prepare for what is ahead, which I believe is abundance and blessing. What he says he would do, which is remove his hand off of Job and allows the man to be seen. He allows the man to be tested because when Satan is after 
anybody. It's not the company he wants. It's not the status he wants. It's not even the clothes he wants. He wants the core of a man. He, he, he wants what you are. He wants what you were born to be. If he can somehow find his access to that, all of the rest is going to follow. So it's important to look at our house, look at our physical house, look at our emotional house, look at our mental thinking, what's going on in our thoughts, mm -hmm. and even our physical house, the house, the place where we live. Is there a lot of clutter? Is there a lot of things that are hindering us from making progress and making things look different and better? What exactly is going on? in our house yes yeah. so if we think of our house as you know our outward house the house that you live in your body as a house and then your mind and thoughts as a house and your heart house yes in my meditation especially for this month my birthday month and the fact that i wanted to focus and recharge and get ready for 20 19 um, this is the image that I got from the Lord in my devotional time that this is my physical house and then I need to clean it out and get it ready for visitors you know this is the holiday season and we tell you want to keep the house clean and how can we prepare it but then I started thinking about it about my body that I wanted to work on my physical body how can I clean that out what do I need to do differently what do I need to take away to downsize to change and then my heart my mind and my heart what is what are what are the thoughts that I'm having what are the things that I need to work on the intellectual part my mind my will my emotion my soul and then my heart my soul my spirit my spirit what is it in what it, what is in my spirit that needs to change do I have bitterness? Do I have um, pride? What is it that needs to be fixed? And what's going on in your heart? Yes. And what are you letting in? And what are you letting out? What is um, taking up space? What needs to be removed? What needs to be added? What does one need to do to really work on one's house? Of its facets. How do we work on our house? And that's the question. Well, as I said, I love, I love the series of Focus. Now, in this, in this, this, this change, you find that he got diseased. He had death around him. There was a break of... He's talking about Job. And he's talking about the fact that Satan wanted Job's character. ...of the human experience that he did not experience. The only other character akin to this is Jesus, who the Bible says had to experience everything we could ever feel before he could be called the Son of Man. Job is the only other biblical character that experienced every feeling anybody could ever feel in their life. He felt it all. And you find it because the way the book now starts to open up is there are monologues now. It'll make sense in a minute. And what a monologue is, is if I, Matthew Stevenson, decide to go in a room and talk to myself about myself. I hate my life. I mean, he, he just had it. Job was like, cursing and ruined is the day I was born. He was like, don't bring me no birthday cakes. Bring me some death. I just wish I could chew. Job said some pretty strong stuff. And then, in the beginning of his life, he started to notice a change in his wife's loyalty to the type of life they were called to live. After misery came upon them, Jimmy, the wife being a good woman, she had good intent toward him, walked up to him and said, I tell you what, if it's going to get any more, more worse than this, go ahead and curse God, profane him and die. Job said this to his wife, shall we accept the good from God? And not accept the bad as well. Now that's a way to shut it down. What kind of woman knows what to say from that? He, she walks away amazed at this man's fidelity and loyalty of God. That even through what looked like the worst, he still saw that the worst was going to be a weapon. And somehow would not become an enemy or a bitter person to God. And then it shifts. After a series of monologues, it goes into a series of discussion between Job and three friends. <laughs> the meat of the book is Job's discussions, ventings, uh, testifyings, and 
and his instability in conversation with three men, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar, they are all talking and sometimes they have wisdom, sometimes they don't, sometimes they are agreement, but you find somehow, even through Job's venting, he would always pivot back to the sovereignty of God. Isn't that even wonderful? Even the sovereignty of God. Truths, even though he would own where he was and how he felt, he would dump out his humanity. He always somehow found his way in the sovereignty of God. And basically what that meant was, I don't know why this is happening. I have no clue why this is happening. I didn't foresee it and I can't see my way out of it. But I know one thing. Watch me. God is God. Now, I, I know that that, that, that may trouble <laughs> you, that but you are going to reach God a moment is particularly God. right before the season changes in your life where you're going to have to have a bottom line. And your bottom line is going to be now this is painful as crap i don't understand this i'm mad at it i'm furious about it but god is god and because god is god i'm not going to pretend like i am if he's allowing this he is lord over this he's god he's god wow he's god. and he defines dr stevenson he defines focus as the the protector and the pursuit of wisdom and you know my ears perked up when he talked about wisdom because you know I believe that wisdom is the principal thing and then the name of my channel is Lady Wisdom Speaks right and Lady Wisdom Speaks Academy and my book is entitled Lady Wisdom Speaks and Lady Wisdom gives a party and it is a continuation and looking a little deeper at wisdom so if focus is the protector of wisdom and focus is the pursuer of wisdom then I think I need to pay attention to what he has to say so here's a little bit a little clip your focus our this focus is the Stevenson's definition of focus okay here it is it is the pursuit of and the protection of wisdom Dr. Matthew Stevenson III of All Nations Worship Assembly, Chicago, has to say about focus and wisdom. Focus in any area of life is the passionate pursuit of and the protection of wisdom. If it is a focus on a family issue, you are pursuing what? Wisdom for that and protecting that wisdom. If it is a body issue, it is the pursuit of wisdom on that issue and the protection of that wisdom. In other words, the depth of the book of Job is wisdom. If God says to a people, I want you to focus, what he's saying is you are in need of a level of wisdom that you do not have. Watch me. The greatest spiritual crime in America right now is that people are shouting, dancing, running, conversing, and ain't nobody finishing nothing. A bunch of objectives incomplete. A bunch of dreams incomplete. Halfway getting out of levels. And so most of us live in between where we're coming out of and where we're trying to go to because nobody is focused enough to finish. Well, if you like this video, then like, share, and subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. What's, what's on your mind? How is wisdom affecting you? How's your focus? What are you up to? And um, comment down below and let's have a discussion about this. I'm going to be talking about it a little bit more as we go through this month and into next month as well. About focus, about wisdom, about the pursuit of change, cleaning our house, house cleaning, <laughs> and all of that. So, um, see you next time. Oh, Lady Wisdom says that you're wonderful, you're beautiful, and you guys get to the world so go on out there and shine and let the world know that jesus christ is lord and see you next time on lady wisdom speaks academy bye well you can see i got a lot of cleanup to do in this garden wow it snowed and now the cleanup is on <laughs>